Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Midweek Update. It's the 20th of April, coming out of the Easter weekend. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the holiday, whether you celebrated or not. It was nice to get uh, a day off there uh, on Friday. So, we are back into these markets. We're back into a pretty decent, I don't want to say decent, but it looks to be a recovery so far this week. Uh, today's a little bit of a hiccup. I do think a lot of it has a lot to do with Netflix news, but uh, we'll take a look at the uh, the charts and figure out for ourselves. So let's get into it. If you are going to share, just make sure you take responsibility for the outcome or follow along, I should say, take responsibility for your plan. Okay, well, you got it. Let's get into the market recap. So we're seeing a small bounce in the market so far, I'm going to say this week. I want to go back to the uh, trading room that was done on, on Friday with Robin Darren. And the mention was, hey, we could see a few days up, but we think that the majority of it's going to be to the downside. Uh, even yesterday, Rob recapped saying that, hey, it was a nice green candle, but I need to see more into it. And it's really cool because there's nothing to read into just yet. And he's 100% right. So far, Sunday's outlook in the last couple of days have been pretty much what we've expected. For this to roll over and go to the downside uh, would make sense. I mean, it, it seems poised, at least in the Qs and maybe in the S&P. The, the diamonds, I should say, the, the you know, the... Uh, the industrials and the materials and energy and stuff seem to be showing a little bit of a different sign. So there's three markets with three different stories, but the stories have been there for a while. I've got that slide coming up here in a minute. Sentiment has moved to cautious, but the volatility remains low. I, I still believe there's complacency out there, a lot of it. People are happy. They're comfortable. They've put in. They're sitting on pretty decent profits if they had put in from this last rally that we've seen over the last month or so, right? So you get in, you, you it feels like a bottom. That that huge move that we saw a couple, you know, about a month or so ago uh, felt is like feels like a bottom. Now that doesn't mean everybody's sitting on a profit, but the complacency is there. The volatility is all but dead. Even on these moves lower, nobody's afraid. So that's holding on to some things. That's that's keeping, I should say, the markets up and keeping traders are holding on to positions. Now, I think that might change. We are getting into earnings season, and a lot of the earnings reactions are going to be institutional. But you see, like, Netflix down 20-something percent. I'm not sure where it's at now, but that was overnight. That's going to hit trigger stop orders. That's going to cause flush outs, uh, things of that nature, specific to the company. But that's kind of what is being invested in by the novice. There's not a lot of portfolio stuff. It's more ETFs and very specific companies that uh, I'm seeing some of these you know, some of the new new money go into. Now, that's going to change. It can change uh, when things continue economically. Inflation in indicators still remain high. Economic expansion still keeping pace for now. Now, keep this thought. And Rob made mention on this on Sunday's class I thought was interesting. Ex inflation is fine if the economy is expanding. And so far it is. Now, eventually, if the economy slows, and you know, employment's high, Spending is high, retail sales is high, manufacturing is high, everything's good. New home sales actually had a little bit of a hiccup or, or uh, it continued higher. Uh, existing and permits, showing some good s strength. Now, we've seen a slowdown in one of those housing numbers. I forget which. I think I have it here. But if that slows down and it goes to people losing jobs and then not spending as much money and it's not on pace – with the inflation, then it's a bad thing. So right now, as long as we can keep pace, as economic is spending money and making money, then inflation's okay. But if people start stop, stop spending money or lose jobs or slow down in, in economic expansion, then that inflation is really going to sting and it's going to sting quickly. Uh, so keep that in mind. All right. So there's there's your my my economic outlook. <laughs> for these markets. You know, it's kind of funny, folks, as I've realized economics is, is very, uh, not not really personal, but it can be biased, um, depending on what you're looking at. All right, enough of that. Let's get into some trade ideas. These are the ones that I saw last week. These are the ones we had last week, and I wanted to make mention of them. Caterpillar is one I wanted to show because it was a beautiful trade, and I think I even, we talked about it, we, we discussed it, but I think I put it in as a different ticker symbol, CAF instead of CAT. I apologize for the typo. However, it worked out beautifully. If you guys want to pull that chart up and take a look at it, it was a beautiful bull pullback, and this thing's moved, taken off. Now, I don't have it here today because there's not much we can do with it now. It's a little extended. But GILD, CCJ, X, XOM, and OXY are, are pretty decent. Let's take a look at a couple of the bulls. And then on the bear side, PayPal was neutral, 
and it's actually showing some signs of maybe breaking down. So let's take a look at that, and then uh, MARA and AMD. So let's start with CCJ. This is a nice confirmation of a bull pullback. What's really interesting about this is the last couple of days this has gone down. Look at the sector it's in, energy, right? And uh, we've seen the markets actually move higher. So this is going up when the markets are actually hesitating, right? So it's almost counter trend. But I like the $30 support. It looks beautiful here. And uh, it's, it's moving higher. Very good range on the candlestick itself. What's cool about this is it likes to do this. It loves these shadows when it turns, doesn't it? So we got this beautiful shadow. It might pull a consolidation move like it did here. Uh, but it is close enough to that 20-day moving average, or at least touching it, that I would expect this to kind of sideways to up from here. So pretty good trade uh, moving forward as well. Let's go to GILD. This one was looking pretty good as a turnaround. Look at this little slope here. Stayed at that 62. You can see this mark was pretty big back in this area. This is the solid support at 62. But I like the 2050 cross over here. I do like how this thing didn't go too far below that 61 and a half mark, did it? Just stayed right there, and now it's moving higher. Good confirmation candle today. Don't need to play this race in up to 66 or anything, folks, but sideways to up might be cool. Maybe a targeted butterfly. Since, since I've just remembered, I'm going to say it out loud. <laughs> Make sure to check the earnings on all of these. I didn't. I'm just pulling charts. We are in the midst of earnings season. I do think results should shake these markets up. If you're in a situation, guys, where we know there's inflation rearing, we know there could be an economic slowdown, we talk about a recession, yeah, obviously that's how it works. We're, we're over expanding and then you come back down. It doesn't necessarily have to be a recession. However, these companies aren't going to keep the pace of growth that they've had over the last year and a half, two years. Netflix is a prime example. Netflix had the, the, the big, its biggest surge in history over a pandemic. Unless we get another pandemic, it's going to be hard to replicate. So I imagine that might carry through a lot of uh, uh, stocks moving forward. So we could see a market correction. Doesn't matter. It doesn't mean it's an economic correction. It's just a market correction as it's a little bit overextended. All right, let's get over to the next one here. This is PayPal and the bears. Uh, it was a sideways trade. I believe we took a, took a, took a look at it uh, last week as a sideways trade between 100 and 120 pretty big range. Now it is dipping below that right now, but it doesn't mean it can't just turn around and come back above it. So anybody that's traded the sideways, don't abandon the trade just yet. You know, I'll echo what Rob said on Sunday. There's a lot of things that we don't really, it, volatility is very difficult to trade. And when you get the days that we had ending last week, up, down, up, down, uh, it's very difficult to not abandon the trade. And uh, Corey and I make a joke all the time. He's like, there's nothing like price action that dictates sentiment. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys get that because it's absolutely backwards, right? You know, you get into something after you put in the research, top-down approach. I know this thing's going to be sideways. We'll use this as an example. As soon as it goes bearish, I'm out. Oh, I'm bearish now. You know, well, price action. Nothing will dictate sentiment faster than price action. That's a rookie mistake. All right, so, but... If you believe that it could be bearish, it still, and this is why I have it up there, is because it's it still needs to confirm, and it's got a ways to do so. Let me get the right pin out here. Sorry, guys. This is going to be a real good confirmation. So I like this because this is on a watch list. Now, if this turns flat back around, then that's great. It's great for the sideways trades you guys might have been in last week. Now, if this rolls and breaks down... This might be a good confirmation. So keep that in mind as a bearish. It hasn't triggered yet. It's just one to watch. Also, check earnings. I haven't. All right, M-A-R-A. -A. I do like how this, this $20 is holding, but I, you just feel, I should feel, that's not a good word. I'm just saying that it's staying down to the lower side. The averages are flattening out. There's not a lot of interest much higher than well, obviously, than 30 over the last, since the beginning of the year. So, this probably has a little bit more to slip uh, than move sideways, depending on where they are. They're in a financial company. Interest rates have really rocketed up. At least mortgage rates have. And, and the bonds, the, the yields are increasing aggressively. Now, if that spills over into whatever these guys do, maybe creating loans is going to be a lot more difficult, so on and so forth. So, we'll see. But a nice breakdown below 20 would be good confirmation uh, bearishly. Uh, AMD, this one's been kind of a dog for a while, right, since the beginning of the year as well. 
beautiful, big moves, right? Huge moves. So it did break the 100 last week. It looks really good. Uh, I, I like We liked it last week, right, when we took a look at it, and it's staying there. It looks like it wants to roll over again today. It, ga it uh, gapped up slightly today based on yesterday's close, which closed on its highs, and it's gone nothing, nowhere but straight down since. So it's a volatile stock. You play it somewhere below 100. Might be a pretty cool trade you know, moving forward. All right, so that's those are the ones that I carried over from last week. I like showing most of our trades, and, and, they, and a lot of them have been working out. So great work, folks. So let's get into the market performance. And we have, like like I say, three different stories and three different markets. And I, I individualized chart these, and they just feel and look different. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do them together here. However, the market performance so far, the Dow, the S&P, and the Qs are flat. I mean, about, about a half percent. I think the majority of that is it didn't bounce as much as the other two, which we've seen since the beginning of the year. And I think Netflix has drawn down on it pretty aggressively today. That was a big red spot on the Q, Qs um, this week is today's Netflix. However, the Russells, the Diamonds, and the SPY are having a pretty good bounce. Uh, oil and gold, oil it was low and it just took off again, and then gold has just stayed flat. It's been pushing and playing with that dollar. They were in tandem for a while, but it looks like it's uh, kind of you know going flat. So let's take a look at the charts. Now this is the SPY, and what I'm seeing in this is a very difficult read. Uh, and I want to echo what Rob said yesterday. It's like, hey, you know, yesterday was a really good candle, but I want to see, you know, it's got to get up higher, and then I could change my tune right now. I'm a little bit more pessimistic. I have to agree with it. What's tough about this is it's above the 50. Yesterday's move was pretty important. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, and into Wednesday. I mean, so this week, you know, you, you come off of Thursday because we had the holiday, and you see that red candle close below the 440 mark. Man, I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have been surprised to see Monday be a gap down to maybe the 4, 435, somewhere around there, and it, and it didn't. These markets just flipped right around and went up. Today, they're struggling a little bit. Unfortunately, it's below the 20-day moving average. This is a sideways setup. Now, what was cool about the market update on Monday is Corey did his little dotted line just like this, saying, you know, in about a month, we can expect this, or maybe we can come back down here and touch this 430. So far, it's right in between those two. So I'm not getting anything bullish or bearish <laughs> on, uh, on this chart itself. It's more of kind of a, well, what do you do? Well, it is technically showing signs of a higher pivot low. Right, coming from an equal pivot high, but you do have a symmetrical triangle pattern with what just crossed 2050 moving averages. So it's in the middle of kind of creating, if you take a look at my dotted lines, folks, uh, a symmetrical triangle pattern, more of a consolidation. Now, this could greatly change when it comes to any sort of move by the Fed, especially, right, interest rate hikes faster, so on and so forth, more hawkish talk. In fact, guys, I'll echo uh, something that we talked about. The beige book does come out at 2 o'clock, and we did see a reaction to it last last time. Uh, we might not this time, depending on what they're looking at. So if the Fed comes out and they're concerned about something else on in the beige book, things that they're looking at, the markets tend to read into it deeply, and so we could see a little bit of a reaction. So just side note. However... It is consolidating. We're in earnings season. I think earnings might push pull on that as well. But right now, geez, that's a tough one. A little easier here for me, let's erase these, on the Dow. Dow's just bullish. Absolutely. Nice crossover it had right through here. Um, you know, set its high, consolidating, breaking out, retesting previous resistance. This is just an ascending triangle pattern, right? I mean, I guess we could call it some sort of descending, but what, what's happened is today's action has really cut that off. I mean, if I'm if I pulled this up separate of anything, this is a bullish chart. Wait for a break above the 355 mark, 354, whatever you want to call it, and I and I'd be buying this as a diagonal spread, flat out. The SPY consolidating it looks like it's going to build some strength and maybe break up or down, right? Not sure. Now the Qs, this is the third chart, right? Is a little bit more pessimistic. It's failing at its 50-day moving average. The 2050 are crossed, right? They're flip-flopped. Uh, let me get my pen out. They did exactly what the others did here. However, it's equal. It's equal. This, to me, is almost a head and shoulders pattern, which you think it would reverse, but if it fails to that 340 mark, it could fall farther. Now, yes, Netflix had a lot of impact on the queues, and yes, 
it's funny because uh, in my last slide, folks, I have, hey, these are three different stories, but the stories have been the same since the beginning of the year. The Qs have been leading the down move. The Dow has been super strong. And the S&PY has been back and forth and kind of sideways. They're all weaker, generally. But those are the same stories, and so that has not changed. And one thing that was really neat, uh, let's echo Sunday's trading room again, is the markets are muddled, but the sectors are not. Right? It's tough to see... You know, the markets are doing this, that, and the other, but the sectors are pretty definitive, and they have been for a while. So I think that continues. All right. Let's get to the economic reports here, guys. We've got the NAHB Home Builders Index at right in line. Building permits were up. Housing starts were up, and existing home sales were, were in line or slightly up. So these are higher. There was, a, there was a number, I believe it was last week, that was showing a little bit of decline, or maybe it was this one of these that was declining from... Um, previous because these are all versus these are in line with expectations a little higher so i think it might be is it home sales or housing starts if you guys know let me know but they're showing us a, a decline now that's great when it comes to inflationary pressure but it's horrible because people build those houses and they need their jobs and supplies and materials are expensive and hard to get we know that so this is that delicate balance inflation's great with an with economy they can handle it if it gets too out of control and the economy starts to retract, meaning I'm going to save some money because I'm afraid of gas prices, or you're a real estate agent and you're not selling as much, or you're a home builder and you can't get a job because the houses, the, the parts, you know, labor's not too hard to find, but uh, you can't get the parts to build the house, so on and so forth, then it creates this horrible snowball. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that. We have the beige book, jobless claims, continuing claims, um, manufacturing numbers, services, PMI. We've got all those coming out. But... To tell you the truth, folks, there's not a lot out there. We'll see if the markets do something with that beige book. If they do, great. If not, I don't, you know, I, I'm not going to expect too much because I think front and center is going to be earnings. And I think that's going to carry us through uh, a, a little bit. So, um, thanks. Joe says that mortgage applications are down, which, which would make sense. I mean, my gosh, there wasn't even a, a trend to go from, boy, what was it last two months ago? Last month? Two months? 2.8%? I, I saw people getting houses for two eight, three and eight, three and a half, and it's over five immediately. I don't even think it was a full full seven days before it went to five percent. That is crazy. So we'll see if this is a last, last ditch effort to get that house or if things are just going to completely come to a stop, which is what we don't want. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's get to our outlook. Let's pull the class here. Market direction. Go ahead and launch this. There you go. So definitely on the bear side on Sunday. Um, and I do believe a little bit more on the bear side. You know what? I didn't get a really chance to, to get the end of days for Rob and Corey, but I imagine they're kind of flat to zero or negative to zero. Um, that's I would expect, but based on Sunday's class, it was kind of a negative outlook. So we'll see. And so far, it's been a pretty decent, you know, nice, solid stop move on on monday and tuesday was great good move to the upside today a little bit of a hiccup it popped up the markets are unsure what they want to do with it right now with with the uh with itself i should say now netflix is is a giant thorn on the side there if you want an excuse to sell that'd be a great go a good coattail to ride but so far i'm not seeing too much follow through we'll see we'll see where these markets go all right while you're doing this i think i got some some ideas. Do you think it's hard buying? Return to the mean. A revision trade. Ian, considering the weight of Netflix on the queues, do you think it'd be good to try to counter trend it? Uh, no, I don't. That's just my two cents. I mean, if you could, you can try to take a look at it. But the reason why I'm just going to flat out say no is because the Nasdaq's been continuously weak since the beginning of the year period, and you're going to find stocks like Tesla that will. You know, it'll be down 4%, and then the next day it runs 4.1%. And the next day it's down 8%, and the next day it runs 3%, per, you know, 3% and then 2%, and then 4%, and then it drops another 6%. So it's a guessing game. It's a day trading strategy. Personally, though, you know, my two cents on it is no. Um, now, if you want to do something like revisions and fun stuff like that, uh, play earnings. Go play some earnings. Uh, you're probably a lot better off. You get the one big... Swing at the bat, right? You either knock it out of the park or you don't. Um, they're expensive, right? Corey made mention of that. It's going to cost you a lot to uh, uh, to get into those calls and puts if you're going to try to play the direction or if you're going to do credit 
you're going to get a lot for it. However, you got to get out of that after the uh, after the um, after the, uh, the event. So if you want to play something like a revision or some, I, you're probably better off just playing the earnings. All right, let's see, no more comments. All right, cool. Okay, so that's enough of looking at this blue screen that you guys have been clicking on. 94% votes. Awesome. So, right in the middle, 60, 33, 33, 7. That is an absolute goose egg. Makes total sense. All right, cool, guys. Thanks for that. So, uh, I've got to close it. There we go. All right, and I am exactly with you. So I am zero weekly outlook. And take a look at, I love this, this slide here because I got below, above, and then the slope. And you got red, green, yellow. That is zero, right? It's above the 50, below the 20, and the slope's pretty much flat. Both of them, well, the 50's flat, 20's maybe a little bit sloped down. I'm zero for the week, I'm zero for the month. Uh, now I'll tell you this, I'm negative one, at least, on the Qs, and I'm plus one on the diamonds. How's that? It's, if you guys want to be that way, that's where we're at. So if you're building a portfolio outside of earnings, not a bad place to be. If you want to look for some bulls, continue to look for energy. You've seen the sectors. I mean, communications has been getting smashed regardless of what Netflix just did. In fact, we got that, that chart coming up here in a second. So let's take a look at these sectors because they have just been consistent. Um, so, so far this week, let's zoom in on this bad boy. We've got... Uh, com uh, communications services at down 1.32 percent, and industrials were just edged out at 3.54. Now, what was interesting? So the consumer I have out there, it, once again, is the cyclicals 2.57 percent, but the defensive was at 2.77 percent, just slightly above it. I noticed that while I was putting these numbers in this morning. Obviously, that might have changed, but this is a general move for everything to the upside. Right, except for maybe the communications, which once again could have been heavily weighted by Netflix. But it has been going down the whole time. In fact, let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at the strong one here. This is going to be industrials. So industrials looks like the diamonds, doesn't it? This one's kind of trying to get its head above its resistance area that is set in February at about 102.50, 103, let's call it. Uh, but on its way back up to 105, 104 and a half. Looks pretty decent. I uh, like this trend here, right through this. I like that. That's kind of neat. A little bit lower there, but uh, it's looking pretty good. So this is where I think it's gonna. It's struggling, right here, this area. But if it can sustain here, move sideways, a nice diagonal uh, to uh, 105 would make sense. So this is a great trade if you guys wanted to uh, do it. Let alone just follow it. So let's jump into the communication services and. You know, they, uh, we'll call this Netflix, right? Because this is where it closed. And so we'll just call this gap down in this move Netflix. But this has been doing this for a while, ever since this move off the bottom. And this is where I believe, I believe the complacency in the markets came here. I think the, I don't know if it's an artificial or a true bottom was put in, which is why the volatility index isn't really increasing when we see moves down like this. I don't. I just think traders are very super complacent. They're happy. They made it through the first quarter. Or they just don't pay attention anymore, and they're just moving on to other things. So we'll see if that remains. Now, if this starts to break levels, okay, then we could get what we refer to as that big flush out with, with a volatility spike and volume. Other than that, I think we just kind of bounce around. And I like how Corey said that, hey, I feel that we're in a sideways market. And he just And he showed us yesterday on the charts. You know, and I, I have to agree to a certain point for now, for now. All right, so conclusion, what did I say I had in here? Yeah, oh, yeah, the three different stories in the indexes, but the stories remain the same. And I'll, I'll go back to it one more time, guys. The Dow is the strongest. The S&P is just reactionary, and, the, and the, uh, the NASDAQ or the Qs has the most to give up. There's still a ton of money out there. There's still... A lot of overvalue in these stocks. And one thing that was interesting is Netflix dropped, I don't even want to know how many billions of market cap just in that drop in 20%, but that just shows you how much it had in it, right? <laughs> it's not like Netflix is making that much money. It's just that's what the market value is. So there is a ton of money in that mark, in, the, in these markets still that could come cascading out uh, whenever it wants to, specifically in that NASDAQ. So cautious but complacent. I'm just going to give that sentiment. It's cautious. 
definitely cautious. We're not, we're not, you know, we're seeing a little move here, a little move there, but it's complacent. No fear, zero fear. There's an understanding or a disconnect or not caring that, yeah, the markets will correct eventually. That'll be fine. So we're still in this. Who cares? I'm fine. I'm moving on to the other thing, kind of an idea with the markets. Um, that changes when margins, margin calls come in and when things get stopped out, so on and so forth. We haven't had it yet. So I didn't change this last slide, I don't think. Oh, I did. I added earnings season to the bottom. So cost remains high. However, demand does as well. And is, 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 if we can keep expanding, then inflation's okay. But at, at some point, one of those has to give. And it's not going to be inflation. <laughs> There's your answer. All right. Okay, let's go... Uh, to the markets themselves and uh, check it out. Oh, there you go. Oh my gosh. It's, it's, it's so funny when you see it visually. So this dotted line is zero. Where's the Dow? Up. Here's the dotted line at zero. Where's the NASDAQ? Down. And here's the dotted line. Where's the S&P? Sideways. There you go. Up, down, and sideways. Funny, huh? Now over here, you can see the big guys are just getting smushed a little bit. Tesla down, Amazon. I don't know if that's following suit because of Netflix. I know Disney is, and I know that Roku is, and some of the any streaming, streaming services probably getting hurt a little bit um, based on that news in anticipation of being weak as well. But it's going to be interesting to see these numbers moving forward. Or earnings season will be fun to watch this, this, uh, this season, I should say. All right, let's move on to traits. Back up to the top. Brian, there you are. Sorry, I had to scroll back up. PepsiCo, we got an April 29th. Let me check my dates here. That's going to be week four, correct? One, two, three, four, five. Week five. The first was a Friday, right? Even though we kind of got gypped because they expired last Thursday, not Friday. So we should. Anyways, it's week five. So a week and a half from today, 171, 82 and a half bull call spread. Get my pen out here. Once 82 and a half, 170 E, 170, not 75, 182 and a half. Right, right there. Okay. All right. What are we doing with this? Earnings are the 25th. Have an order in, but it gapped at the open. Oh, it sure did, didn't it? So probably going to cost you a little bit too much. If you're going to play this through earnings, though, Brian, I mean, actually, no, just wait. Just wait. Because it's come down a little bit since the morning. Let the volatility calm down a little bit. Boy, this might actually start to move down before that happens. You said the earnings are on the 25th, so you've got... Oh, okay, oh, you got a few days on there. That might be something to watch. Let me write it down. I like, I like the bullish pattern in it. Maybe it's moving higher because of anticipation of it. Let's do this, PP. All right. You guys make note, 24. 5th of April. So, I'll leave it up to you guys to remember when the earnings are, right? All right. And we got, Neil's got AJG, I believe. Or is it, yeah, AJG. We've got a June, May, 180, 185 diagonal call. It has monthly option expirations. So, a little bit on the distance wise, 180, 185. Okay. Okay. I mean, 2.23%. <laughs> it's basically, you know, well, I can't do the math in my head, right? A three fourths of the move right there. So it's already done in one day, and you've got uh, two and a half months. Just teasing you, Neil. You're actually completely fine. I mean, you might. No, no, no. No, no, no. Just play it there. I mean, if it's a 185 May, it's probably going to get up above that before. I think if, if, you know, once again, if this trend continues well before your expiration cycle, um, you know, you could have 180, 190 if you got to go monthlies. What's tough about that, though, you're not going to bring in a lot for that 190 and it could be pretty expensive. So, no, you're fine. 180, 185. Just, you know, you're going to have to sit through some of this stuff, hopefully, right? That's a good sign if you have to. But if you had, you know, if you could do the one, 190, then it might be a little bit. And it's, it's plain and simple, folks. I just figure if I'm going to throw the ball further, right, I got to throw it higher. Think about the arc of a ball. Like if you're throwing a, a football, you can zip a straight line at the receiver if he's 5, 10 yards out. But if he's 50 yards out there, the ball goes straight up in the air. 
before it comes all the way back down. So I always think of 180, 185 would be like your 10-yard play. 180, 190 would be your 40-yard play, right? So if you're going to go longer, you might want to go higher target-wise. Boy, I hope that analogy made sense. Okay, Jim, let's get to PAAS. He's got... Okay, back to there. Okay. Uh, bull call spread to eight thirty. Browser hiccup. Oh, okay. That's because he put it in four times. I'm like, wow, are you doing spreads per whatever? Or no? Okay, I got gotcha. you. He's doing a uh, twenty-eight thirty May bull call spread. Okay, let's drop twenty-eight thirty. Okay, cool, good, yep, not much to say on that. Same idea, I mean, you don't, if it has monthly expirations, you're kind of stuck with it, that's uh, the 20th, so it's three and a half weeks, kind of in the same situation that Neil is. I'm, I'm fine with these, the, the distance on these guys, you just got to be patient with it. And they might hit the targets before you get there. Uh, let me write both those down, I forgot AJ, G, I don't want to make sure I write these down before I move on, and P A A S. I'm fine with that. I'm totally fine with it. There's nothing wrong with sitting in a, in a trade that's, you know, in the money, right? Okay, cool. Thanks, Jim. All right, Ian. A couple of trades today. We got EA. Bull call, 29th expiration, week and a half. 123, 127. Is that right? 23. Is that, am I getting this right here? EA. April 29th expiration buy 123 strike sell the 127. Okay, that's a little counter, isn't it? Let me know if that's counter in, or I'm reading it backwards. I apologize if I am buying the 123 strike right here and then 127 sell, or is that a credit? Credit, credit spread, bear credit. 123 sell the 127. It's got to be yes, bear call spread. We'll call. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, an earnings play. Let's do this. Hold on. Let's scroll down a little bit. Nope. Not an earnings play. All right. Yeah. Well. Hmm. I'm not sure I agree with that. That's fine. That's. I mean, once again, I mean, if he, if you see or know something in there that I don't, Ian, that's fine. I. I if it was a bear. Call spread, I'm okay with that. But on the bull, not so much. Let's go to your next one here. You got EA. AP. Diagonal call. Diagonal call by June 100 strike, sell May 105. Okay, there you go. 100, 105. Makes total sense. Right in the meat of that. Let me write that down. AEP. All right. So, yeah. So, I like the consolidation right through here. It looks like it's, you know, it gapped up so far. I mean, that can definitely change. I could zoom in a little bit up on this, guys. But even if it wants to just play a monkey around, that's cool. Plenty of flexibility there. You got a pretty good exit point at 101 if you really wanted to make an adjustment to it. But nice. like that one. Let's go to another one here. Let's go to AEP. Is this D? Diagonal call by June 85. Sell 90. Yep. Another good one. Dominion Energy, right sector. Everything looks good on that. Let me write that down. Cool. Number of trades not at. Not a buck. Very smart. Yeah. And Ian goes to say, hey, he's just, he's. He's, he's picking a few. You know, he's not throwing out a whole book. And, I, you know, guys, a couple things with that, it's great because it, it's really hard to put on a whole portfolio of trades over an earnings season because it really messes things up. I mean, take a look. If you had Disney, you know, uh, Disney didn't do anything today, right? But it gapped down because of Netflix. So 
It's one of the way. Oh, actually, that would have been great. Disney, you should have been short in anyways. <laughs> so maybe it would have helped you anyways. So what I, I guess what I'm getting at is there's no reason to throw out a whole portfolio when it could be muddled with pretty quickly based on an earnings event or something like that. So, But picking and choosing, and I'm not, I'm not – I'm not opposed to counter trend trading at all, especially if you're going to do it on an earnings announcement. I'm totally fine with that um, for like just that quick bang, get in, get out, so on and so forth. It just depends on what you're seeing in it. All right, let's get to Joe. He's watching ALK. Let's see here. What he says, what is he saying? It's a uh, H&S neckline. Head and shoulders would wait to see if it closes over 60 bucks. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Look at this. Head and shoulders neckline, right? I think that you know, probably probably there, I imagine. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Feels pretty extended, but that's how these things start. You know, and some of these airlines have been uh, really turning around late as of late. I wonder if that's expectations of more travel. It's, it's interesting that because usually when gas prices goes up, the first thing that gets hurt are airlines. But if you've got... Uh, people that are penned up and ready to go on vacation, I don't think they're going to care. So, once again, that's a consumer that stays active that can keep up with the inflationary pace. Right? All good things. So, let's hope it stays. Okay, cool. Moving on. Let's erase these while I can. Um, is that it? No, I think that might be it. All right, guys. Let's take a look at what the markets have done since we've been chatting. More of the same, it looks like. Let's write this in here. Okay. Yeah, and it's tough. It's These are tough. I'm Every time I look to throw a dart, uh, I pull it up and it's changed. So it's one of these things where if, if I don't have to play, I won't. And uh, I'm kind of disappointed with uh, Netflix. That was one that I was looking to do a bearish earnings announcement plan. I just kind of let it slide. I, I didn't really... I'm like, ah, maybe I'll get to it later, and I never did. But um, I was ready. I had an out-of-the-money vertical put ready to go. And uh, not 20% below it. It was more like about 8, 10, 10%. Uh, so it would have been sitting at max gain. I just had to wait the rest of the week, and I missed it. But I might throw some earnings trades out there. I think that's about all I'm going to do with these markets until I get something a little bit more clear. I don't know where you guys are at with that, but I mean, that's, that's kind of my plan of attack. Past that, I just don't see an advantage. I don't see an advantage. If you make a mistake, make it in the direction of the uh, sector you're looking at. And then let's well, let's, let's say it again. You either got to be super short term. And once again, I'm fine with a trade that's uh, three days, five days. Or I'm totally fine with something out that's long. You know, Neil is saying about, hey, if you're going to go May, June, maybe you should uh, go up to the 190 strike. It doesn't matter. 185 is good. It's cool. But I do like the time. You got plenty of time to play that volatility game. So uh, just using you as an example. Thanks, Neil. All right, guys. Well, that's all I got. I didn't think we are going to do too much today, uh, considering where the markets are at. But let's see if that beige book gets a reaction. It did last time. Um, but uh, try to keep your charts going. Follow the, you know, the markets in front of you, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Thanks, guys.